So, Topher, come out here. So hey, he's I, the underwear man. Underwear guy. <laughs> if only. But he's also got some of these. There it is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's so great to be following that last talk because, uh, as he sort of mentioned, this rise of environmentalism, but actually finding ways that it merges with technology um, and our experiences overall. But here, to, to sort of set you up, I'm going to take you into the rainforest. So this is the sound of Indonesia and Sumatra. I visited Sumatra for the very first time in 2012. And it's the overwhelming sound that kind of strikes you the most when you're there. It's cacophony of noise, but there's some things that do kind of stick out from time to time. So like this is uh, that's a, a hornbill, a giant bird. This is a cicada. <laughs> and these, these are gibbons singing to each other from a distance. That's what the forest sounds like all the time. Um, but actually, when I first visited this place, uh, I, this is a gibbon sanctuary, a uh, place where they rehabilitate these baby gibbons uh, to be released into the wild. Uh, I didn't realize that actually they were spending a lot of their time uh, trying to protect the outskirts of that reserve from illegal logging. Um, and so actually behind the sounds of the rainforest uh, that entire time uh, were the sounds uh, of chainsaws. Um, and they had three full-time guards, but they actually weren't able to know where the, where the chainsaws were the entire time because it was so big, it was so noisy. Uh, and one day went walking off in the forest and stumbled on, uh, on you know, these, these uh, loggers who managed to get away. Uh, but it struck me this was kind of ridiculous and this is something I wanted to, uh, to address. I'm from Silicon Valley, from San Francisco, uh, and I figured that technology must play a part in this. Um, so what was there out there? There were people who wanted to stop it. Uh, there was actually pretty good cell phone service. Everyone's on Facebook and surfing the web. There's no roads, no running water, no electricity, but you know, they charge their phones once a day and they can actually connect. Uh, so, you know, in, uh, in my naivety, I came up with this great idea. So the moment a chainsaw goes off in the forest, it's, the sound gets picked up by this device in the tree, which over that network transmits to the cloud, which fixes, uh, you know, the signal, sends it to go to the guards, and they get like, what? And they jump on their <laughs> motorcycles, and they get out there, and they stop the logger on the spot. Real footage, you guys. It's real footage. <laughs> um, but still, you'd need some kind of device to get this done. And I think actually in the last talk, she mentioned that uh, 1.5 billion smartphones were, uh, were bought last year. Uh, a lot of them were thrown away, too. So um, about 150 million smartphones are thrown away uh, in the US alone last year. And it turns out those phones are pretty awesome little computers, little sensors. They can connect to the networks that are there, put them in a box with a microphone and some solar panels, and you can actually accomplish this, uh, this task of being able to monitor the forest um, with trash. Uh, this is kind of what this idea looks like all put together. This is me putting it together in the garage at my parents' house uh, a few years ago. <laughs> really nice of them to allow for that. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, it's one thing to build it in San Francisco, but you've got to get it out in the field. So I took it back to Indonesia, put it up on a tree, uh, and on the second day it was up there, picked up the sounds of chainsaws. Uh, you know, we put it up there, these guys had climbed up, uh, they got back down, they're smoking a cigarette, everyone's just chilling. I get this uh, email on my phone, and it says there's a chainsaw in the distance, and we quiet down, and it turns out that uh, there was. So we took off and ran through the forest. Um, and this is when I kind of realized when I got there that this might not have been the best idea <laughs> in the world. Uh, but that guy, oh, he's moving, so now I gotta move. Uh, and we go up over the hill um, and, uh, and actually interrupt the loggers um, in the act. And this was sort of the moment when I, when I sort of realized that the right people these are the people that, uh, the, these guards, these, these uh, rangers, they could really make a difference if they just were able to know where they were supposed to get soon enough. And it should be automatic for them. So this is the sound of that chainsaw, or a chainsaw in the forest. And you can pick it out automatically. Um, so beyond that, it's, it's not just about picking out chainsaws, right? So why do we want to protect the forest? There's really cute animals in the forest. Everyone knows that. These are the reasons that we want to protect it, right? But well beyond that, there may be things that, that are much more urgent. So like climate change. Uh, it turns out that climate, of climate change, of all the carbon that's released into the world every year, uh, almost a fifth of that comes from deforestation, more than all the transportation put together, more than all the cars, planes, trucks, ships combined. None of that adds up to the carbon emissions uh, from deforestation. Um, and 90% of the logging in the rainforest is illegal. And if it's illegal, then there's a mandate to stop it. 
And so we can work with local partners and old technology to be able to accomplish this. And it turns out that logging, well, all deforestation is not from logging. A lot of it's from agriculture. Logging is so, illegal logging is so profitable that that's what actually creates the roads. And the roads themselves are the harbinger of doom for the forest. Because once those roads are there, uh, that actually leads to the wholesale destruction of the forest from other activities. So if you can stop illegal logging, which there's a mandate to do, and people who would do it, then you can actually, uh, it might be the fastest, cheapest way for us to fight climate change today. Uh, and it uses what's already there. That's, what's, that's what I kind of love. So it's one thing to test it in Indonesia, Africa. Let's take it to Brazil, the biggest rainforest in the world. So if you look at Brazil, you have this kind of uh, ocean deforestation with these islands of pretty intact forest out there. Like, what are those? Are those protected areas? Turns out they're actually indigenous reserves. These are places like Indian reservations um, in the US and Canada. Uh, that, uh, that have been, you know, they, they technically belong to the tribes, but they're actually not that well under control. Um, this is the Tembe Reserve, uh, the Tembe tribe, and it's the Tembe themselves. Um, and actually in 2014, when we met them, uh, this entire purple area was controlled by illegal loggers, whoops, settlers, and uh, drug cartels. Um, and just going from village to village would be like this. They'd just be driving from one town to the next, uh, and they'd run across these huge trucks filled with wood, well-armed, brand new, uh, just taking wood from their land. Obviously very dangerous for the tribes. Um, but for them, they kind of knew that this was an existential struggle for them. Uh, so uh, they kind of suited up. Um, they trained 30 rangers to be able to take this on. This area is really big. It's about 1,000 square miles of forest, about the size of Yosemite National Park. Um, but they realized that they had to take this on. Um, but it's a really big area, and so how would they actually be able to do that? Well, it turns out there actually is cell phone service around this, but it's a good, you know, 15, 20 miles from the edge of, the, edge of this, um, this reserve. So, you know, normally when you want to, you know, create cell phone service or extend it, you have to build a tower. But what else is there in the forest that's pretty tall uh, that you can use just like a tower? Trees. So we started to learn how to climb trees. Uh, and we worked with the tribe to be able to do that. And when you can put one of these devices way up top in the tree, you can hear sounds from, you know, kilometers away. You can pick up cell service from 15, 20 kilometers away. Um, and because these things are made with cell phones, uh, we can actually hand this, this uh, depiction off to them entirely. Because the antenna is uh, most fragile and sensitive. So is, uh, you want to put the microphone on there? Learning how to put one of these devices together. Yeah, that's good. Just like the garage. Old cell phones are available to almost anybody all the time. And so these aren't trash. These are actually really, really powerful little computers. They can connect to the networks that are there. They can record the sound. They can do all this great processing. The hard parts, of course, have to do with making it possible to power them and making sure they can actually pick up sounds from a great distance. But all these are things that you can do with pretty standard electronics. Cool. Pronk. Pronk. Here we are. Katu. So they managed to set these things up um, across the perimeter of the reserve um, and, uh, and over time picked up the sounds of some, uh, some chainsaws. I'm actually going to show you what it's like to be able to pick these things out because, again, it's not people listening. Um, it's actually a bridge over from, uh, from the first day and a little bit of what... Um, we heard in the last talk uh, about AI. This is using artificial intelligence in the cloud. We're streaming all the audio off of these phones and picking out uh, the sounds of chainsaws. So this is a pretty obvious one. This, you guys can hear that chainsaw, right? This is actually just from uh, May. So that led to an alert. Um, but it's the really subtle things. You heard the forest is really, really noisy. So what about this one? Raise your hand if you hear the chainsaw. All right, that's pretty good. Good speaker system, you guys. Okay, it's, it's, it's pretty subtle, uh, and if you're in the forest, you might not hear it, but the AI is able to pick this out pretty well. Uh, and so we're attempting to use uh, really cheap technology in the field, really standard things like cell phone networks to be able to, uh, to use high-tech technology um, software to be able to pick it out. Uh, and actually, this alert that you heard uh, led to uh, this time we were able to mobilize. Picked up the sounds of some logging trucks. And so at the end of that road, there were about two dozen uh, Tembe guards yeah, who were able to stop the truck. Um, and they were able to seize the truck. Um, I wouldn't say arrest the loggers, they, they sent them away. Uh, burn the truck, leave it on the outside, seize a lot of other equipment and uh, disrupt these operations. A lot of what I'm here to talk about is how completely badass these guys are. Um, <laughs> Every single one of these rangers is able to have a bigger impact on climate change, potentially, than a dozen engineers at Tesla, and they don't even know it. They're just trying to protect their backyard. 
uh, some of the best things we can do is provide them with technology and support to get it done. Um, and that's uh, kind of what I'm here to talk about. So uh, it's not just about them as well. It's also about other ways that we can connect. Like, you know, basically, if we're streaming all the audio out of the forest, uh, it turns out that we can also create an app that allows you to listen to live sounds of the forest from anywhere in the world. So this is from Ecuador. Because a really important part of protecting the forest isn't just about catching loggers. Obviously, we have to create more interest, because what you and I care about in the United States and Canada and Europe uh, is actually what the rest of the world wants to protect. So well beyond that, uh, it's also about what, what else can we pick out from the forest? Because the good news is that in situations like the Tembe, if you can actually stop loggers on the spot, they'll go away for a little while, usually like a few months or a season. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to stream all that stuff out. So how else can we make that useful? Well, let's go back to Indonesia, to the forest that's out there. And it turns out, let me turn down just a little bit. It turns out that from the sound of the forest, the cacophony of noise, the same techniques that we use to pick out chainsaws, we can immediately make available to all the ecologists, biologists out there so that we can instantly start categorizing in real time, as well as archival, uh, all the sounds coming out of the forest and build the biggest audio arc, um, almost like a saved archive of the entire world. Um, and again, you saw these really intense solar panels and microphones and the rest. Um, that's one way to do it. We want to make sure this is available to everybody so that you don't have to be able to, you don't have to go to the forest to learn about it. You don't have to go to the forest to study it. Uh, anybody around the world can do that. Um, but at the end of the day, this is kind of what, uh, you know, the device looks like. But the really important part is just the phone on the inside. And so uh, very soon we hope to be able to make it possible to just download this software onto your phone from the Play Store, put it on your windowsill, and start learning about all of the uh, amazing things happening in the backyard. Because again, it's not about any particular technology. It's about all of the technological detritus that's lying around. Cell phones are so cool. If we can make the right software and find the right people to use them, then we can really make a difference. And we absolutely can save the forest and the environment overall. Thanks, guys. That's, uh, that's so disarming. <laughs> I mean, you made it sound really so simple, in a way. Climbing those trees is a bit dangerous. Oh, that's, that's the easy part. Yeah. That's the easy so part. have you mobilized? I mean, oh, teams yeah. now all over the world? I teams all over the world. Uh, we've been able to aid in the protection of about 1,000 square miles of forest. But we think we can triple that, actually, <laughs> um, by uh, this time next year. It was really a great inspiration. Julie, would you? Wow. Thanks, guys. Okay. Hey. Come join us. <laughs> yeah. One more. Eyes open. Good. Yeah. Um, well, just before you go, oh, who yeah. is us? Oh, it's Rainforest Connection. Uh, we're working with Saks Underwear, uh, who've uh, who really sort of trying to, to make it show that, that people around the world can make a difference, just guys make a difference. Uh, but um, visit the booth outside and learn more about it. Uh, Rainforest Connection and Saks working together to protect the rainforest. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.